Welcome to Shandon United Methodist Church. If you are a visitor with us this evening, we welcome you to our Monday, Thursday service. You are our honored guest, and we're so glad to have you here with us. We hope uh, for the opportunity to meet you in person in the future. If you are a member at Shandon United Methodist Church, we're so glad you're tuning in again. We miss you. And uh, we look forward again to the time that we can see you in person. Uh, thank you for being here and please stay well. Tonight I have for you the um, typical reading for Holy Thursday, which is from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17 and 31 through 35. Hear now the word of the Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter and said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, Lord, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you will have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, one who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but it is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. And for this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for this time to share with you on this holy week. God, be with all of those who are suffering. Give them strength and courage and wellness. And God, prepare our hearts to hear from you as through your word and through a sermon. God, I pray that you speak for me. And if not for me, then in spite of me. Amen. So we're gathered here today on this Holy Thursday. And I think that if we were to add a little levity to it, we could 
maybe put into place a kind of Sesame Street context where we choose a word of the day just to add that smidge of levity. And I think the word of the day could be foot washing. Now, foot washing brings us right into um, the context of feet, which is where John's gospel goes with it. And if you're like me, you don't really just love feet. I mean, feet don't draw out crowds. It's a historic kind of low attendance day, this Monday, Thursday. There are few things worse than feet. And that might be elbows. Elbows were they to face forward would shame all of us. And at this time and place, I would like to share probably a little too much that even my own feet are the shameful lot of Christmas polish meets coronavirus meets spring meets the mandated closure of all of the foot washing establishments. I, maybe like some of you, still have on my winter holiday polish, which is a gold glitter of sorts. And at this point, it's morphed into a kind of gold glitter French pedicure. So now that I'm feeling like I've rather overexposed myself a bit, I think I'll put my shoes back on and head over and we'll talk together about Monday, Thursday. So let's talk about Monday, Thursday. Monday, Thursday refers to the Thursday in Holy Week, which is today. And Monday comes from the Latin word meaning mandate. The Latin would have read mandatum novum, or new mandate. The question in these texts is perhaps which mandate? On Holy Thursday, there were actually kind of three. One would have been the institution of the Lord's Supper, which is kind of a big deal. However, John's Gospel, the Gospel we just read, leaves it out almost exclusively. But in other Gospels, we get Jesus saying, this do in remembrance of me. Those words that we use so um, often in our liturgy for the Holy Communion. And you've probably seen that famous painting by Leonardo da Vinci of um, the Eucharist, which was instituted similarly with all of the disciples there sharing in this Last Supper with Jesus right before Friday's crucifixion. The second mandate would have been the foot washing. Now this one was really challenging for Peter. We hear him in his response being challenged. It almost comes across to him as a kind of abomination. His response is, Lord, you will never wash my feet. And we can say that it was mandated because Jesus doesn't let him off the hook, saying, unless I wash your feet, you will never have any share with me. Even more importantly, Jesus states, you also ought to wash one another's feet, for I have set before you an example that you also should do. The third mandate would be the new commandment Jesus refers to in that phrase, mandatum novum, which is actually a dumbed down version of the greatest commandment. And Jesus states it's anew because I think we have trouble getting it. This new commandment in John's gospel is simply love one another. And Jesus adds, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Again, we already have the greatest commandment, that verse that says that we should love the Lord our God with all our hearts and souls and minds and strength, and that we should love our neighbor with ourselves. But doesn't it bear repeating, love one another? 
And so Jesus repeats it because we might need it sometimes, this new commandment that we love one another. The Monday and Monday Thursday is really kind of an American spin on things, if you will. Sure, Monday comes from the Latin meaning mandate, but other nations and peoples use different names for the Thursday and Holy Week. Germans most typically refer to it as morning Thursday, and I think we can all understand that. In the Old English and for Scandinavian and Finnish speakers, it is referred to as Long Thursday. Others refer to it as Silent Thursday. And others still call it Holy Thursday, like we sometimes alternate between Monday Thursday or Holy Thursday. I'd like to suggest to you tonight that we may also call it Humble Thursday. Because it seems to me that if I were staring down an unjust crucifixion by the imperial powers of the day, that I might be a little more woe is me. Instead, Jesus makes of himself an eternal host by instituting the Eucharist. He also makes of himself a servant slave instituting love as the most powerful force for change in the world, which includes washing one another's feet in this action of love one another, in this action of the new commandment. Now John's text skips the institution of the Eucharist entirely because John is that other gospel writer who or again, this a kind of Sesame Street context, we would see John in one of four squares and they would be singing that song. One of these kids is doing his own thing. One of these kids is not like the others. And that kid would be John. John is doing his own thing here. But what I like about John's text is the stark humility of it all. Humility, like feet, connect us to the ground. The word humility literally comes from the Latin word humus, meaning earth or ground. And Jesus in this text makes of himself in a quite humble, but also quite scandalous manner. He gets up from the table, he takes off his outer robe, he puts on the loin cloth of a slave and kneels before his closest followers. Now just imagine for a moment how provocatively scandalous it would be occurring at a dinner party today. It would be absurd. And the story would read Jesus the HR nightmare. But in their time and place, this action is the teaching of death, of dying to self. Fleming Rutledge says it best. She says, the Son of God is stooping to wash us clean of our transgressions. You see, the true love of God is not about power and control. Instead, God's love is about power and humility. As Becca Stevens says, love is the most powerful force for change in the world. So I like to call it Humble Thursday, because today is that day that God stoops in the love of a servant, reminding disciples everywhere, you and I included, that to truly love one another powerfully. It isn't enough to be a good host or to tell people to love one another. We too have to model this stooping in love. For as Jesus says, you also ought to wash one another's feet. It's important to remember that the love of God does not bear out this week of holiness in any kind 
of human pursuit of power and control. Nor does it prop up any human ideology or understanding. In fact, it really rather turns it all upside down. And it becomes a complete inversion of our human ways of being. From the donkey of Palm Sunday to the foot baths and their stooping of today and to the criminal execution of the savior of the universe tomorrow, there is a staunchly undeniable sense of humility because we see God's powerful love in action where God humbles God's self for the suffering of the world. And we know that only a suffering God can save us. So if we go back to that Sesame Street context, maybe we should change the word of the day to humility. The virtue of humility is one of the most important spiritual virtues. It's also one of the ones we hear the least about. We just don't name it enough. And if we're not naming it enough, then perhaps we're not putting it in practice enough. But Jesus was here humbling himself to demonstrate and to model for the disciples this powerful love in action because he was preparing them for a journey. Like all human journeys, sometimes the roads are long, dark, depraved, maybe even death dealing. Jesus' journey was the Via Della Rosa, literally the way of suffering. And so again, only a suffering God can save us. The Lenten journey that we have shared this year has already been a lot of things and a lot of suffering. Recently, I read on Facebook a quote that said that this is the lentiest Lent we have ever Lented. It's a little bit humorous, but it's also quite true. And I don't know about you, but it resonates quite a bit with me. The good news in the gospel is that even in hard times, even when Jesus was riding the dusty path of his darkest days with the crucifixion in sight, Jesus still shows up. He shares food, physical and spiritual, and he is the eternal host of our souls who stoops for us in love, not just then, but today also, that we might also stoop in love for one another. Now, when times are hard for me personally, and sometimes they are, I have a prayer that I have memorized that I have meditated on many times to try to help push what's bad in my mind kind of out of the way. And so I can make more room for what is good. And it's actually a prayer card that St. Teresa of Avila wrote. And I'll leave it with you tonight and perhaps we can post it on Facebook for you. It goes like this. Let nothing despair you. Let nothing make you afraid. All things are passing. God alone never changes. Patience gains all things. If you have God, you will want for nothing. God alone suffices. So thank you for being here on this humble Thursday. I pray that you and yours stay well. And I pray that you also may stoop in love for your neighbor during this time by staying home and practicing humility for those who may be predisposed to unwellness. For right now in the journey, this is how we practice loving one another. Amen.